Have you ever wondered how digital circuits are optimized? Well, you're in for a treat. Today we're going to explore a graphical tool that's often used to simplify Boolean expressions and optimize digital circuits. It's called a Karnorf map, or K-map for short. Picture a grid where each cell represents all possible combinations of input variables. That's your K-map. This grid provides a systematic way to visualize the relationships between input and output values of a Boolean function. This tool is particularly useful for functions with a small number of variables. Now let's talk about the components of a Karnorf map. First we have the grid, which is filled with cells. Each row and column corresponds to a unique combination of input variables, and the number of rows and columns depends on the number of input variables. Inside this grid, each cell corresponds to one min term or max term of the Boolean function. These terms are determined by the number of input variables. For example, for two variables, there will be four cells. Each cell is then labeled with the corresponding min term for a sum of products expression or max term for a product of sums expression. Finally, the map is filled with the output values for each cell based on the truth table of the Boolean function. This is where the magic happens. By grouping cells and following a set of rules, we can simplify the Boolean expression and find an optimized solution for the digital circuit. So what's the big deal about Karnor maps? Well, they're a valuable tool for simplifying Boolean expressions, especially for functions with a small number of variables. They offer a visual and systematic approach to finding optimized expressions for digital circuits. Understanding Karnor maps is like learning a new language. It might seem daunting at first, but with practice, it becomes second nature. So are you ready to dive into the fascinating world of Karnorf maps? Constructing a Karnorf map might seem complex, but it's really just a matter of following a few easy steps. First, we need to determine the number of cells. The number of cells in a Karnorf map is based on the number of input variables. For invariables, there will be two to the power of n cells. So if we have three input variables, we're looking at a map with eight cells. Next up is labeling the cells. Each cell corresponds to either a min term or a max term of the Boolean function. If you're dealing with a sum of products expression, you'll label each cell with the corresponding min term. On the other hand, if you're working with a product of sums expression, you'll label each cell with the corresponding max term. Now we're ready to fill in the map. Each cell gets filled with the output values, which are either zero or one, based on the truth table of the Boolean function. The truth table is a tabular representation of a Boolean function, showing all the possible values of logical variables along with the result of the function. So, you start with the first row of the truth table, find the corresponding cell in the Karnor map, and fill in the value. Continue this process until you've filled in all the cells. Take your time with this step, as it's crucial to get it right. Remember, each cell in the Karnor map represents a unique combination of input variables and each row and column corresponds to a unique combination of these input variables. The number of rows and columns depends on the number of input variables. That's it. You've successfully constructed a Karnor map. It's a systematic and visual way of representing the relationships between input and output values of a Boolean function, making it easier to simplify and optimize Boolean expressions. Now that we've filled our map, let's move on to simplifying it. The real magic of Karnorf maps lies in their ability to help us simplify Boolean expressions. Now, how does this simplification work? Well, it's all about grouping cells, following certain rules, and creating simplified expressions. Let's delve a bit deeper into this. Firstly, you need to group adjacent cells that contain a 1. You're essentially forming rectangles of 1s, and these groups should always be in powers of 2. That is 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. The aim is to cover as many ones as possible with each group. Now, here's where the rules of the game come into play. These groups you form can be horizontal or vertical, but they can't be diagonal. Picture a Rubik's Cube, but you're only allowed to slide the tiles horizontally or vertically, no diagonal moves allowed. Another interesting rule is that these groups can wrap around the edges of the map, sort of like a snake in the classic video game Snake. Let's not forget, the groups should be as large as possible and overlapping groups are perfectly fine. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, where pieces can fit in more than one place to complete the picture. Once you've made your groups, each of these corresponds to a product term in the simplified expression. 
You then combine these product terms using OR operations to get your final simplified Boolean expression. And there you have it, a process that may seem complex at first glance, but once you break it down, it's just a systematic way of grouping and simplifying. The beauty of Carnal Maps is that they provide a visual and methodical approach to finding optimized expressions for digital circuits. With these rules in mind, let's try an example. Scene script. Let's put theory into practice with an example. Imagine a Boolean function with two input variables, A and B. The truth table for this function might look something like this. When both A and B are zero, the output is zero. When A is zero and B is one or vice versa, the output is one. And when both A and B are one, the output is zero again. Now let's construct a Karnorf map for this function. We create a two by two grid with each cell representing a unique combination of A and B. We label the rows and columns with the values of A and B and fill in the cells with the corresponding output values from the truth table. Next, we need to group the cells. The goal is to form rectangles of cells with a one in them, with each rectangle containing a power of two number of cells. If we look at our map, we can see two separate cells with a one in them. So we have two separate groups, each containing just one cell. Remember, groups can be horizontal or vertical, but not diagonal, and they can wrap around the edges of the map. Lastly, we create the simplified expression. Each group corresponds to a product term. The first group, with A equal to 0 and B equal to 1, gives us the term AB. The second group, with A equal to 1 and B equal to 0, gives us the term AB. We combine these terms with an OR operation to get the final simplified Boolean expression, AB plus AB. And there you have it. We've just used a Karnorf map to simplify a Boolean expression. It might seem a bit tricky at first, but with practice it becomes second nature. As you can see, Carnor maps make simplifying Boolean expressions a breeze. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? We've navigated the intricate world of Carnor maps, or K-maps as they're often called, and explored how they can be employed to simplify Boolean expressions and optimize digital circuits. Just to jog your memory, let's take a moment to recap the main points. We delved into the components of a Carnorf map, which includes a grid made up of cells. Each cell represents a unique combination of input variables, and the number of rows and columns is determined by the number of input variables. Remember, each cell corresponds to a min term or max term of a Boolean function. We also examined the process of constructing a K-map. It begins with determining the number of cells based on the input variables. Next, you label each cell with the corresponding min term or max term, and then fill in the map with output values for each cell based on the truth table of the Boolean function. But the magic really starts with simplification. You group adjacent cells with a one in them to form rectangles of ones. The groups should be powers of two in size and cover as many ones as possible. The groups can be horizontal or vertical, but not diagonal and can wrap around the edges of the map. Each group corresponds to a product term in the simplified expression. You then combine these product terms using OR operations to obtain the final simplified Boolean expression. And of course, we walked through an example to bring it all to life. We simplified a Boolean function with two input variables, A and B, using a K-map. The end result was a much simpler expression, demonstrating the power of K-maps. Carnor maps are a valuable tool for simplifying Boolean expressions, especially for functions with a small number of variables. They offer a visual and systematic approach to finding optimized expressions for digital circuits. With Carnor maps in your toolkit, you're well equipped to tackle digital circuit optimization. Thanks for joining me on this journey, and remember to always stay curious.